so this will start out as a uh, follow-up to a video that I did a while ago on I had a bunch of um, TLO 72 op amps that I had purchased that were obviously fake and I tried to find the region of use even though they're fake they're still an op amp so what was the best way to use them and I completely failed I could not find a, a use for these things other than maybe a comparator or uh, anyway, I, they were really, really confusing me. And uh, with some help for uh, viewers, uh, some viewers pointed out that they might be uh, single-ended uh, op amps where it's not your, you, the, the rails that you use, the, the voltages that you, power voltages, you don't have a plus voltage and a minus voltage. You only have a, uh, a ground and a positive voltage. Those are single, single supply op amps. And I thought, oh, that, that could be, I didn't test that condition. And then um, uh, Alan W2AEW uh, pointed me to a, a video that he had done, uh, his video number 212, uh, no, uh, 215. His video number 215 talked all about uh, op amps that have crossover distortion. And uh, the op amps that he was looking at were LM258s, very, very common op amps. And I was not aware of the crossover distortion that those particular op amps had. And I'm not talking about fake op amps. I'm talking about the real deal LM358s have this weird crossover distortion that I was unaware of. So my, I'm 67 years old. And I remember back a long time ago trying to use LM. Uh, 324s and LM358s and just having a hard time with them and instead of learning the idiosyncrasies of those parts I just swept them under the rug and said I'm just not going to deal with those parts any longer right um, there are modern op amps that don't have those problems and I'm just going to avoid them so I never took a hard look at at why those op amps do what they do now uh, I have a little box of op amps, and I do have some LM358s, but I never ever use them. Um, I have some 324s, and those these are usually just because I repair things and I wanted to have them on hand. But the parts that I really, really like to use are these TLC um, 272, 274s. These are the single rail versions, and then the TLC uh, 072, 074. These are the plus and minus rail versions, and, and these are just my favorite op amps. And then to do audio stuff, there's some really nice op amps like a, a 5532. It's just a really good op amp with really fast. Uh, slew rates and stuff. I love that one. There's a low noise version and then there's a real nice one down here uh, the 4556 which is 70 milliamps. This is a bruiser. So I, I like the JRC parts a lot and so the JRC parts and the teal part they have no problems at all but these other parts do have problems and I'm going to get to a they have so many problems that TI wrote an application note on how to use them. Okay, they're complicated, so here's how to use them. I'll try to remember to put a link down below. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that paper. But let me first show you that um, the parts that I received. I have it marked in red here. These are the Chinese uh, 072s, and I'm comparing it. I like this board. I, I'm using to compare one uh, op amp with a different op amp. Okay, so one op amp is over here. And I have an LM358, a real deal one, an LM358 over here, and I have my fake uh, TLO72 over here, all right? And then we'll go up and we'll just take a look at uh, waveforms, all right? So the yellow waveform is the uh, LM358, and the, uh, the blue waveform is my Chinese part that I received, okay? And you can see that they look pretty much the same, okay? Uh, I'll do, uh, let's see here, let me do a square wave. Um, and you can take a look at the slew rates of the two. They match perfectly. Um, then we can go into some corner cases. We can, we can make the frequency, let's see here, let's go back to a ramp. And we will go, uh, oops, we will go faster and faster and faster until they start to fail. All right. And so they're starting to fail around here. 
around uh, 50, 50 kilohertz. And you can see that uh, they're, they're both failing right at about the same frequency and failing by the same amount. So I, I can fairly confidently say that the parts that I received that were in a bag marked 072, I mean, each part was marked 072, are actually LM358. So they take chips and they just buff off or sandblast off the markings and then they just put any old other mark, whatever op amp they want to sell that day, they just put that number on it and they say, here you go. <laughs> and it's just some other random, random device. Now, if you buy fake 072s online, don't expect them to be LM358s. So they could be anything at all. Whatever the guy has on hand and whatever you want to buy, he'll make the two match. You know, it's like going and buying a dog. It's like, oh, you want a schnauzer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a schnauzer. Yeah, it's not, right? Anyway. <laughs> um, let me show you another thing, okay? I'm not gonna tell you what I did, but I am going to do something to the circuit, okay? And we're gonna go back to, let's say, uh, one kilohertz, all right? And you can see that these two chips are showing the same crossover distortion. They have a weird little, a weird little bump in them, right? And um, that weird little bump occurs both in real LM358s and fake uh, TL072s or whatever it is, right? But the Chinese uh, LM358 and the real LM358 um, have the same, um, have that same crossover distortion. And then I have figured out how to magically make it disappear. And let me do that. I will get to that, show you the magic. And now we can make it disappear, okay? So um, let's go away from f the fake problem to how do you really use LM358s um, correctly? Because um, I never knew. Um, there actually is a lot of care and feeding for those parts that I was not aware of. That's probably why I avoided them. So um, in general, I'm a lazy person. And um, if something is difficult to use and there's a simpler path, I'm going to take the simpler path and I'm not going to look back. Um, unless I'm really forced into it. It's like somebody says, no, you must use an LM358, right? But if there's an easier, simpler path, um, I'm gonna take the easy, simpler path. And like I said, those other op amps don't have those problems. So why would I ever use an LM358? But let's say that you want to, just because they're so darn cheap, or you end up with a bag of 50 parts for free, um, here's what you do with them. All right, so this is a TI application note. And application design guidelines for LM324 and LM358. Now, the 358 is a dual op amp. The 324 is a quad op amp. They are the same die design. They were the, exactly the same. It's just this is the quad version and this is the, uh, the dual version, okay? So, you know you're in trouble when they use language like this. Um, the LM324 and 358 family of op amps are popular and long live general purpose amplifiers due to their flexibility, availability, and low cost. Understanding how these op amps are different than most other op amps, okay, put that in I mean, red, red, red ink there. How these op amps are different than most other op amps. Yeah, these guys are special. <laughs> They're on the short bus. <laughs> uh, before using them in your design is important. So yeah, these guys are different. So you need to learn how to use them and forget everything you knew about other op amps because these guys are special. <laughs> Okay, and that's probably why I, th I threw them out of my memory and said I will just not deal with those things. But you, if you learn how to use them, then, then they do stuff, okay? And they do some things quite well, but you really, really have to know how to use them correctly. Okay, I guess the first thing that's a bit different is the way they draw current on the input. Um, they don't have a linear response to uh, input current versus input voltage. There's a step in them. Um, and I, I don't know if that's 
unusual and I, I think that's quite unusual anyway. Output voltage versus input voltage. They can do a phase reversal on you, but only if you go below the negative rail. If you stay above the negative rail, they're very good about coming down to zero volts. So one of the reasons that people like to use these parts is, is they usually use them in single supply applications where the negative rail is ground and the positive rail is plus five or plus 12 or something like that. But you use them in single ended mode, okay? And they're very good at coming all the way down to that negative rail, okay? They'll come all the way down. So let's say you have it in a, a ground and five volt system. They're very good about coming down to ground. Unfortunately, they're very bad about coming up to five volts. Um, they really don't like that at all. So other op amps, that you might choose are very good at pulling up just as well as pulling down, but not this guy. This guy pulls down really well, but doesn't pull up very well. There might be as much as a two volt difference between, let's say you have a, a 12 volt input, they might only pull up to, uh, to 10 volts, okay? So yeah, they don't pull up very, very well. Now they have this problem in the output. The output's a little bit funky um, and um, there is a, active current source, a 500 microamp current source that is a short circuit protection circuit and it can kind of get you in trouble on the output, okay? And let me show you the, uh, it's a very long document. <laughs> yeah, there's lots wrong with this part. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me show you this graph here. This, this graph should say everything, okay? Um, Look at that waveform, the red wave waveform. That's exactly what I've got. That's the that's the bad waveform. Let me let me reach around the camera here, and I will do this to the circuit. And we have those little we have those little bumpies, okay? And uh, let's do the the other one. Let's do this to it, okay? So here's one one where we have bumpies, the crossover distortion. Here's one where we don't, okay? And so that should look exactly like this chart here, okay? And in fact, it is exactly this chart. Um, under certain circumstances, you get the bump. And under, under other circumstances, you don't get the bump, okay? So it's important that if that bump is a problem in your circuit, there's a way to fix it. Sometimes it's not a problem, sometimes it is a problem, okay? And let me show you what the difference is between these graphs, okay? This is the, this is the input, so it's always good. And then they have one condition where it's good, one condition where it's bad, and then one condition where it's good, okay? And what circuit did they use in order to generate this, this data, okay? Um, they used this circuit. Now, I don't like the way it's drawn, but basically the output is connected to a 2.7K resistor. Now, if the... 2.7K, so they're, they're, they're running the op app at plus or minus five volts. That's the conditions, plus or minus five volts. Yes, you can run these things. They don't have to be single-ended. You can make them dual-ended, but anyway. So they're plus or minus five volts. And if you tie the 2.7 uh, ohm resistor to ground, you get the glitch. If you tie it to plus five, you don't get the glitch. If you tie it to minus five, you don't get the glitch. But if you tie it to ground, you do get the glitch. And guess what? In most of your cases, what are you gonna do? You're gonna tie it to ground, right? You got a plus or minus rail, say plus, tw plus or minus 12, and you got some kind of load. Your load is usually ground referenced, okay? And if you ground reference your load, you'll get the crossover distortion. You have to have your load referenced to either the minus supply or the plus supply, all right? So let me show you that over here. All right, so um, the top, trace is uh, floating right now. So, it, so it, it's like tying it to ground. In fact, I will tie it to ground. See here, let me make sure I'm using, I've got two clip leads here and I don't want to get them confused. So let me get rid of one of them here. All right. All right. So right now, and let me get rid of uh, one of these traces. Okay. Let's just look at this one. All right. I am going to have a resistor and I'm going to pull it to ground and you can see that we get a crossover exactly at ground okay now I'm going to pull it to the minus rail it goes away now I'm going to pull it to the positive rail and it goes away but if I tie it to ground 
You get the crossover distortion right there at zero volts. Um, so yeah, so if you ever want to use an LM358 and not get crossover distortion, you need to have some type of load somewhere, uh, I would say somewhere between 1K and 10K, somewhere in that range. They're using 2.7 fine. I think they, they show some other 5k, so maybe between 1k and 5k is a better number to use. I'm using 1k in my circuit, but um, between 1k and 5k I think is a good bet. And what does that do? What does that do? How does it fix it? So there's this weird Darlington PN, uh, NPN that's on the output. And there's a resistor, it doesn't really matter. And then there's a a PNP that pulls down to ground. Kind of weird that there's a PN. Anyway, um, doesn't matter. The thing of it is, if you just let it float and then you start changing the voltages, you uh, there's sometimes no current flowing in this thing. You need to have a load that's always keeping either this transistor on or this transistor on, one or the other. If you keep one of them just kind of a little bit on all the time, then it's happy because then this guy doesn't get in the way. Somehow this guy gets in the way. I haven't thought through it too hard, but somehow this guy gets in the way. And if you have this guy on most of the time or this guy on most of the time, then it always works. So it's, it's a very weird op amp in that, in that respect. And uh, remember, it's a special one. So um, if I had ever learned this back in the past, I would have immediately recognized this waveform and said, oh, those op amps I've got are LM358s. <laughs> but I just never gone down this road before. There's probably some other problems as well. Here's some crossover. There's some, uh, there's some problems with um, uh, delay through the part as well. And I don't know, there's a bunch of uh, quirks about, I would call them quirks. Uh, definitely quirks about the LM358 and also the LM324. So anyway, yeah, if you want to, if you end up with a bag of weird parts um, and you want to use them, then just pull the, Pull the, uh, the output either high or low and you fix it all up. But don't pull it to ground. Yeah, don't pull it to ground. Unless you haven't, so unless you're operating it single ended and your negative rail is ground and your positive rail is plus 12 or something, then yeah, pull it to ground. It'll be fine. But pull it to the negative rail or the positive rail. That's what I should say, but never in between. <laughs>